Hello, and welcome to the Neurodiverging Podcast. My name is Danielle Sullivan, and I am your host. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're here to talk about the dreaded or exciting New Year's resolutions. Setting New Year's resolutions can be a really interesting time as we look forward to a fresh start and envision positive changes in our lives. However, according to a frequently cited study from 1988, only 19% of people who set resolutions are able to maintain them for two years. Apparently, people responding stated that lack of willpower was the biggest barrier. The researchers also reported that excessive stress and negative emotions contributed to slips. It's now 36 years since that study has been published, and we finally understand that a lack of personal control Excessive stress and negative emotions are all common for ADHDers. And ADHD is actually more strongly linked to anxiety and depression compared to autism alone. We even know that thinking of ADHD traits as a lack of willpower is an act of reducing a complex relationship between an individual's neurotype and an inaccessible society to blame neurodivergent people for failing to conform to neurotypical standards. So for those of us who are neurodivergent, sticking to resolutions and working toward our goals is naturally challenging if we keep thinking of it as a linear process, especially since the traditional approach to goal setting doesn't align with our unique needs and strengths. But fear not, in this episode today, we're going to explore how to create New Year's resolutions that are neurodivergent friendly, empowering us to make meaningful progress and celebrate our achievements along the way. Before we dive in, I do want to take a moment to thank my patrons over at patreon.com slash neurodiverting. They put in the money to make this podcast possible and to fund our sliding scale. If you would like to be a patron, please go find out more at patreon.com slash neurodiverting. Thank you so much to those folks. Now, let's go back to resolutions. What are some things that you can do right now today to start on the path to setting goals and making them actually happen? Well, the first step in creating a neurodivergent friendly resolution for the new year is to embrace your neurodivergent identity. Recognize that your brain works differently and that is okay. Understanding your strengths and challenges can help you set realistic goals that take your unique neurotype, special interests, abilities, and needs into account. For example, if you struggle with sustaining attention and focus over a prolonged period of time, instead of setting a resolution to work uninterrupted for hours on end, consider breaking down tasks into smaller, manageable chunks. I have heard from podcast listeners who listen to us five minutes at a time because that is what works for them. That is an example of splitting your attention into shorter chunks that work for you. Emphasize quality over quantity and celebrate your progress along the way instead of pushing yourself to go even farther than you originally planned. It's really easy to tell yourself that you aren't allowed to sit and watch TV because you didn't finish all your tasks or that you can't meet up with your friends because you didn't clean the house. And sometimes you might have to forego those things if it means prioritizing your mental health. But most times we need to allow ourselves to find the balance between doing tasks and rest, even if resting looks like, quote unquote, being productive by engaging in a project related to our special interests. And that's because engaging in that project nourishes us and gives us energy. Ultimately, we do not need to earn the right to engage in activities that make us feel good just because we fail to conform to neurotypical standards. We deserve to rest and we deserve to feel good regardless of our productivity. When it comes to setting resolutions, it is crucial to be realistic and flexible. We often have different energy levels, sensory sensitivities, and executive functioning styles, even in comparison to each other, because we will all present our neurotype differently based on things like gender, race, ethnicity, and culture. Recognizing and respecting these differences is key to creating resolutions that are attainable and sustainable. You can start by focusing on the big picture of the goal you want to achieve. Then work backwards by listing the tasks, actions, or activities you need to do to build towards that big picture. From there, break down each task, action, or activity into small, achievable goals that align with your interests and your passions. For instance, if you're passionate about art and you want to focus on the big picture of creating a piece that is showcased in a local gallery, by breaking down the steps into small and achievable goals, you might set a resolution to spend a few minutes each day exploring a new art technique. Each small goal can be used to build up towards creating a small work of art and then slowly working towards the bigger piece of work. 
Remember, it is okay and expected to adjust your goals as needed. Just because setting resolutions occurs at the beginning of each year culturally doesn't mean that you need to achieve the big dream in that one year. There's a reason why five-year goal plans exist and 10-year goal plans and 15-year goal plans, and your resolutions can build towards those larger-than-life plans. Besides, life happens, and it does not care about the plans you had agreed to do in order to see your resolution come to fruition. Flexibility is essential for long-term success of reaching the big picture goal that you have in mind. Neurodivergent individuals often face unique challenges related to mental health and self-care, as I mentioned earlier. Therefore, it's important to prioritize your well-being and make self-care a top priority. Build self-care into how your resolutions are being planned and as a part of the planning process. Consider incorporating activities that promote relaxation, stress reduction, and emotional well-being into your resolutions. This could include practicing mindfulness, including active mindfulness, engaging in regular physical exercise, or scheduling regular breaks throughout your day. Remember that taking care of yourself is not a luxury, but a necessity, and it will ultimately support your ability to work towards your goals. Because let's be honest, if a study shows that autistic children are generating more information at rest, then that means that we might be doing even more in our resting time than we are when we're actively being seen as productive by society. It's also why we're considered to have quote unquote disorganized thoughts and why it seems like our brains never stop thinking. It makes sense that as neurodivergent people, we need a longer time to have deep restorative rest than our neurotypical peers. By building self-care and mental health into our resolutions and committing to providing accommodations for ourselves wherever possible, we are supporting ourselves and the world in breaking down the standards of neuroconformity, one resolution at a time. It's no secret that we often have a unique perspective and a way of approaching life as neurodivergent people. Instead of focusing solely on the end result, please celebrate the smaller milestones and progress you make along the way. Recognize and appreciate your efforts, even if they may seem insignificant to others. Ultimately, we can make the resolution to stop measuring our effects by neuroconforming standards, just by embracing who we are. Every step forward is worthy of celebration and a testament to our resilience and determination of loving and caring for ourselves in a deeply inaccessible world. Finding ways to reward yourself for your achievements, whether it's treating yourself to something you enjoy or taking a break to relax and recharge. Remember, resolutions are not set in stone, and it's important to be adaptable and adjust your goals as needed. Life is unpredictable and circumstances may change throughout the year. If a goal becomes unattainable or it no longer serves or interests you, please don't be afraid to modify or replace it with something that better aligns with your current situation. You can even choose to make resolutions every quarter or six months if you choose. At the end of the day, the purpose of resolutions is to improve your well-being and your happiness and to have a better life. So it's essential to be flexible and make choices that support your overall growth and fulfillment. No one else's. Setting New Year's resolutions can be a transformative experience, especially when approached with a mindset that exalts your specific neurotype. Embrace your neurodivergent identity. Set realistic and flexible goals. Prioritize self-care and mental health. Celebrate milestones in progress and adapt as needed. Remember, progress is not always linear. And in fact, it is often a spiral. It's okay to adjust your resolutions as you navigate that journey. With these strategies in mind, you can create resolutions that honor your particular strengths and empower you to make meaningful progress towards the life you envision. Cheers to a fantastic and non-neuroconforming new year. Thank you so much for joining us at Neurodiverging today. I hope this episode was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please send it to a friend or hit like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. Thank you again so much to my patrons for supporting this podcast and to Sophia Kaur for their help with the script. You can find a transcript and learn more down in the notes. We have many other articles, webinars, and other resources for you, um, as well as links to all the studies mentioned in this podcast. Happy New Year, and please remember, we are all in this together. We often have different energy levels, sensory seventy sensory seventy sensory seven no. I know. It's, it's yeah, it's not working, is it?